Dan, you're an atheist. Uh, Robert, you're a Christian. Robert, both of you gentlemen spend a lot of time uh, talking uh, in, in situations like this, debates and what have you around the country. I'm not going to have a formal debate between you two. I want a dialogue. I'm not going to let either one of you filibuster, but I'm not going to sit here with a stopwatch either. Uh, Dan, you're, you were or are you still an ordained minister? I, I don't know how that works when you, when you lose your faith. Well, according to the state of California, once ordained, always ordained. Uh, I was ordained in 1975. However, I think there's a lot of people in my former church who would, if they could, they'd like to excommunicate me. But I'm still doing marriages in the state of Wisconsin where I live now, recognizes my ordination. Uh, the state says they're not in the business of deciding whose religious views are the appropriate ones, or even if you have to believe in a God to be a minister. Now, how, uh, you obviously lost your faith. How did, uh, and, and now you're a member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. How did that happen, Dan? Well, uh, actually, I did not lose my faith. I gave it up. I threw it away. I discovered that faith is illegitimate. Faith is a cop-out. That if an assertion has to be accepted by faith, then that's an admission that that assertion cannot be accepted on its own merits. Faith, faith is uh, irrational. What I did was I lost faith in faith, is the way I phrase it. Uh, faith is not one of the valid avenues toward knowing what is true or false. And for that reason, you woke up one day and said, I don't believe in God anymore? No, that was a very I mean, uh, gradual... The reason I, the reason I, oh, okay, because the reason I asked that is, I mean, you should have figured that out long before you became ordained. <laughs> well, no, I was young. I was 25 when I was ordained. I, I had only read my own particular theology, my own particular book. I had not broadened at that time. What happened with me, it was a sort of a gradual four or five year process of migration across the theological spectrum. I started out as an extreme fundamentalist, but I didn't stay there. I moderated somewhat. Uh, I started realizing that perhaps Adam and Eve were metaphorical, they were not historical. It was hard to accept those things because fundamentalists tend to be absolutistic in their interpretations. I spent a year or two as a moderate evangelical Christian preaching salvation in the gospel, and I migrated even further. For about a year, I was what you might call a liberal Christian believer, where I had thrown out, you know, most of the essences, but it still maintained some of the shell. Yeah. And finally, at the very end, I threw out all the bathwater, and I discovered there's no baby there. There's no evidence for the existence of a God, all of it, not just Adam and Eve, but so is God, a huge metaphor that humans have invented to try to explain existence. And more than that, I discovered that I don't need this belief system. Atheists, uh, unbelievers, other religious people can be just as happy, as fulfilled, as productive, as moral, as in fact, a case could be made that they're even more moral than most Christians because they're thinking for themselves. Robert? Well, you see, my testimony, of course, is I came from the other way. Uh, for every one Dan Barker, there are millions of atheists who have left their unbelief and have come to faith in God, in the Soviet Union, the Eastern Bloc, uh, in communist China right now. My own personal experience, I was raised in a non-Christian home. Uh, my father was either an atheist or an agnostic, depending on his mood. And why did I leave? Uh, the lack of faith, uh, skepticism, free thinking, things of that nature. Well, just like Madeline Murray's son, Bill Murray, I saw that all of the arguments and the ideas presented by atheists, agnostics, skeptics, and free thinkers actually violated the laws of logic and science, and the whole system that they had was based on faith, a leap of faith, and an example of what we call in psychology, wish fulfillment. That is, they did not want God to exist. So I discovered, for example, that where my father was an old-fashioned atheist who would say, there is no God. Well, as I began to study logic, I found you could not prove a universal negative. And to make the statement, there has never been, is not now, and will never be any God, gods or goddesses of any a shape, size, or distinction is something you cannot prove. So then I moved on to George Smith and Gordon Stein and to others who were what we call in philosophy fideistic atheists. That is, you recognize you can't say there is no God, so you don't try to prove that. Instead, they went to another logical fallacy, which is saying, well, if I can 
uh, successfully uh, defend myself and refute well, a theist or religious person on a few arguments here and there, that means my own position is therefore valid. So you have George Smith saying that uh, on the basis that once I refute some of the theistic proofs, therefore I, or atheism, has been proven to be true. Uh, that's a logical fallacy. It's called ignorantio elenche. And then I moved on to look at uh, those who said, well... Does that uh, go on forever, Robert? Yeah. Well, what I found was that uh, atheism is based upon faith, faith in yourself that there is no God and that you can live accordingly. Dan is saying that the fact that that Christianity is based on a faith, on having faith, I, I, Dan, don't let me put words in your mouth here, proves there's no God. I mean, we're, Robert, how do you respond to that? Well, again, see, he may have been involved in some kind of deviant form of Christianity. Um, I'm a Reformed theologian, and just like the Apostle Luke, uh, the scriptures say that, for example, the resurrection of Christ is seen from many convincing proofs so that it is a faith based upon reason, experience, science, archaeology. It is not a blind leap of faith such as what the atheists do, but instead a consistent theist will say, I have good and sufficient reasons for what I believe. Dan? Dan? Oh, hi. Yeah, I think I heard most of that. Yeah. Uh, first of all, both of you men have mischaracterized atheism. I've never said that the fact that Christianity is based on faith therefore proves that there's no God. Uh, and, uh, Robert, you claim you have read George Smith's book. You completely misrepresented what George Smith said in his book, uh, uh, Atheism in the Case of Against God. There is no atheist in the world. Well, I should, I should say maybe there's three or four. There is no atheist in the world, though, except for a few crazies on the fringe, who will say that they can prove there's no God, who will say that atheism is a proof that there is no God. What atheism is, it is not a faith, Robert, and if you had read any more of the atheistic literature, you would know this. A, a contemporary and historical atheistic literature is an almost near unanimous agreement that atheism is a lack of faith. It is not a faith. It is based on the fact that since there is no reasonable, plausible evidence for the existence of a god, it is un unjustifiable then to hold a belief in that god. Every baby is born an atheist. Every baby is born without a belief in a god, and it's something that has to be indoctrinated. It's not violating the laws of logic to say that I am going to not believe something for which there is no evidence. It is supremely logical. I agree with you that you cannot prove a universal negative. No atheist is trying to do that, and for you to set up a straw man and mischaracterize and misrepresent atheism is it's unforgivable. It's, uh, well, it's, um, it's, it's, it's changing the debate. You should let atheists speak for themselves. Certainly you would like Christians to speak for themselves. And well, finally, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is probably one of the strongest reasons why I believe the Bible is contradictory. It is given from five different points of view. It is so contradictory that even Christian theologians cannot agree that they can even make a coherent story out of it. The number of women, the names of the women, the time of day they went to the tomb, the number of angels or men, uh, the message that was given, the first post-resurrection appearance. Did the women tell anyone afterwards or didn't they? The Gospels contradict each other on at least 20 different crucial points. The resurrection of Jesus is one of the proofs that the Bible is a sloppily thrown together document. Robert? Well, again, if you pick up your Webster's New World Dictionary, it states under the word atheism, quote, the belief that there is no God. If you look in Collier's Encyclopedia, the Encyclopedia Americana, the Encyclopedia Britannica, Funk and Wagnall's Encyclopedia, or you look in the Dictionary of Philosophy, the Encyclopedia of Philosophy, or let me quote some atheists. Madeline Murray O'Hare, she wrote a book entitled What on Earth is an Atheist? In the chapter entitled, Definition of Atheism, this is what she states, and I'm reading it right now, word for word, I am an atheist, and this means that I do not believe that there is a God or any God, personal or in nature, or manifesting himself, herself, or itself in any way. Or again, Charles Burton Martin, atheist 
deny that there is a being called God who created the world, watches over man, or knows his actions. And he probably knows some of the other books. Um, for uh, well, Here's Nigel. Uh, some of these are Prometheus books. Uh, do you, uh, he perhaps knows B.C. Johnson, the Atheist Debater's Handbook, the same company that does his children's book. This is what he says. The atheist may claim to know that God does not exist. So I have the scholars on my side, the dictionaries, the encyclopedias, the uh, encyclopedias of philosophy, atheists who are in print stating this is what atheism is all about. It is the assumption, it is the faith claim that there is no God. I think I caught most of that. Am I, can I jump in, Bob? Absolutely. That's why you're here. All right. Uh, no, Robert, you do not have the scholars on your side. Open up to, Robert, to uh, Madeline Murray O'Hare's book again. That same quote that you just read, she did not say that atheism is a belief. That she did not say she believes there is no God. Read it. She says she does not believe that there is. There's a difference between a belief and a lack of belief. Yes, Robert, there, are, there is a subset of atheism. There is a tiny subset of atheism who you might call hard atheists. And if you read George Smith's book, you would know this. Sometimes they're called anti-theists as opposed to atheists. There is a small subset who will say, yes, I deny the existence of God. And in fact, I even on occasion will informally make that statement, much in the same way that you, Robert, might deny the existence of Santa Claus, although you can't prove that Santa Claus doesn't exist. In informal language, well, you it is justifiable to, to make a denial. I deny that leprechauns exist, but if you push me up against the philosophical wall, I will have to back up and say, whoops, I can't prove that, because I can't prove a universal negative. Therefore, I have to be an ah-leprechaunist, not an anti-leprechaunist. So what you are doing, Robert, is you are selectively picking quotes that you think fit your straw man definition of atheism. The dictionaries do not agree. I have dictionaries right here who say that disagree with your Webster's quote. Dictionaries are all across the board. Some say yes. Some say it's a belief. There's no well, God. Some say it is an absence of belief. Some say it is a disbelief. Some say it's a denial. But, but Robert, you don't ask dictionaries to define Christianity for you. What you should do is go to the historical and contemporary writings of atheists themselves. You are absolutely wrong to claim that this is a definition of atheism, and you should correct yourself on that. Atheists, well, like myself, would be happy to can. accept the existence of a God. I'm not fighting it. I'd be happy to change my mind. I do not hold a belief. I have no creed. I don't go to church and sing hymns about there's no God existing. You are wrong about this. You're trying to characterize this as some kind of a weird little anti-religion or something, when really free thinkers and atheists are people who are simply devoid of a belief in God, although I do admit there is a subset of those who might be a little more hard-nosed about it. I'm not that kind of an atheist. So stick well, with the general historical definition. Let, let, me ask, let me ask one thing here, Dan, and I don't want to get into a semantics thing. You obviously, at one point in your life, accepted Jesus Christ into your life, Dan. I mean, you're an, an, an ordained minister. I guess your ordination is still in effect here. At some point, you described earlier how over a period of time there was this gradual rejection of faith or, or rejection of God. And, uh, and so you made a conscious decision at some point to reject, to unbelieve what you had decided to believe, which led to your ordination. So... I'm sorry. I'm predicting yourself to a degree here. Well, well, Robert, the point here is that Robert's trying to characterize atheism as a kind of anti-religion. He's trying to say that if we are criticizing religious people for having faith, then shouldn't we point the finger back at ourselves and criticize all right, ourselves? Okay, but, uh, all right, but uh, jump ball, because I have a headline break, and, uh, and I want to take intersperse some calls here, too, 540 Then you reject Jesus Christ and his Father, do you not? Don't you? Well, I reject the concept. It is an irrational and an unproven concept. You reject their existence, am I right? That's right. Okay. But although, although I should say that I might be wrong and I'd be happy to prove wrong, but at this point, since there's no evidence, it is rational not to believe in them. But I'd be happy for you to prove to me otherwise. All right, let me, uh, I think we're going to break here. Shall I break? Okay, we're going to break now, and uh, when we come back, uh, we'll take some calls. And um, if, if there's something that you two want to clarify with each other a little bit further uh, before I start going to the phones, feel free. We'll be right back. Through dictionaries and encyclopedias and philosophy books, but I also quote extensively uh, from atheists. 
uh, who Charles Bradlaugh, these are all people that Dan would know about. Well, what difference does it make how you two, whether you two disagree on what atheism, uh, well, how, how it's defined? Why is that defined. relevant? God is what's important, not what the dictionary says about atheism, Robert. Well, Dan? because when someone wants to criticize and to impose their own system of morality on the Bible, on Christianity, say the Bible is evil, Christianity is wrong, religion is wrong. If they begin by saying, I don't have any beliefs, I don't have anything to defend, um, I just simply have an absence of faith, then they have no standard logically by which they can judge anybody out. So uh, here is where the rubber meets the road. Uh, when I meet fideistic atheists, and they say, oh, well, I never say there is no God. I just say uh, I have the absence of faith. Well, that's the same thing that a tree stump has or a rock or a stone. And thus, they cannot criticize the Bible or Christianity because if you do not believe in something, you cannot cr criticize anything. Dan? Well, Robert, you do admit, then, that you have talked to a number of atheists who define atheism as an absence of belief. In fact, most atheists do. The point here is... Not most. The, the point here, most atheists do define atheism no, as an they absence not. of belief. I know the literature, Robert, and you are mischaracterized. Are I you going to define for me what I am? You. Would you let me define what Christians are? If you want to talk to an atheist, let the atheists speak for themselves. I, I, from from I, I do know that there is a subset of atheists, and I admit that, who will deny the existence of God. Uh, I'm not one of those, but the whole point here is whether or not atheism is a faith. It is not a faith. It's not a creed. It makes no assertions. Uh, atheists do have a lot of faith in other areas. Atheists do have a lot of trust and confidence in human nature Can and I morality. And, 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 and they are not devoid of morality. Atheists are not these somehow empty vessels who are floating around in the world living by hedonistic principles. Most atheists are good people with solid humanistic basis for morality, which is better than the, the Christian basis for morality. And that's where I'm coming from. There's a better way than Christianity. There's a more moral, more compassionate, kinder, more logical way than uh, the Christian scheme. And this is not just to tear it down and replace it with nothing. There is a better way. Well, again, see, I would feel that atheism is a leap of faith. No, it's not. Now, here's a dogmatic statement that you made to James White on radio station KFYA. And I'm going to quote you now. Uh, we feel that no one has the right to impose its morality on the rest of the country by dogmatic means, end quote. Now, this is a statement that you made on the radio, so evidently you do have beliefs, and part of that would what be called ethical relativism. Would you state that would be a proper term? Well, yes, Robert, I do have a lot of beliefs. I just don't have a belief in a God. Don't you see that? Atheists are not claiming they're devoid of faith or belief or principles. I just, well, on the question of the existence of a God, there is not a faith in the existence. He said he existence. had no beliefs about anything, thus he didn't have to defend anything. I never said that. No, George Smith. George Smith never said that either. Well, yes. Uh, it's right at, uh, yes, right on the radio with me. I debated him. He said, I have nothing to defend. So in other words, this is what I want to find out from you. If you're going to impose your morality on the Bible, on Christianity, on third world cultures or whatever it is, I want to know on what basis do you have some standard of morality by which you judge other people. Well, I'd be happy to answer that, but let me first say that I do not want to impose my morality on the rest of the world. I do not think I or the state or the federal government has any business imposing what I believe or don't believe on the rest of the world. Then you are, are, are again, mischaracterizing, the for the you are mischaracterizing atheists. Well, somehow trying, we're not running, running into churches and dragging people running around, around attacking pieces. religion. Let me go to the phones, guys. Al, you're on WHP. Yeah, with Paul, jump on. Hey, Bob, this what? guy on here, if you're a Danny boy, if you really want to upset him, don't leave. Don't leave him and give his 800 number or his address. He's just on here to proselytize. He's not on here to convert Christians to atheism. He's certainly on just purpose. He's on here is to convert, you know, the ones in the middle. And instead of sending money, he'll probably wind up in the same jail cell as Jim Baker. But I have a question for Danny. You said that there's like 20 errors or contradictions in the New Testament, but you didn't name any. Could you name one? 
Dan, did you hear the... I, I heard nothing of the call, just a couple little whispers. I have no idea what he said. I couldn't hear anything either. Well, uh, Al, repeat the question. I hear anything here. Well, we've got a major problem here. <clears throat> Must be the rain. We're just waterlogged. All right, WHP, Steve. Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. Hey, I, I, I basically want to do... Uh... Can you guys, Dan, Robert, can you hear Steve talking? I hear him now, yeah. All right. Hi, Dan. Go ahead, Steve. Hi. Hey, the, the question I have basically is, uh, for us lay people, atheists are atheists. Um, you've talked about all kinds of subversions and all that kind of different, different types of atheists. As far as I'm concerned, and uh, for most lay people who aren't familiar with all the terminologies both of you guys are using, an atheist is someone who doesn't believe in God. I'd like to pose one question, and maybe both of you guys could field, field the question. And uh, that is, uh, first of all, to Dan... Um, Robert, I, I would assume, is, is very happy in his life as a Christian. And since he is happy, just take this you know, to the end of what Christianity is and what atheism is. is. If he's happy, and as far as he's concerned, what has he got to lose by believing in God? And I pose that qu same question to you. If, if Robert is right, he's got everything to gain. And if you're wrong, you've got everything to lose. Wouldn't you agree? No, I don't agree. First of all, I am very happy in my life, and most atheists in the world are not these sad, pessimistic people. It's only from the pulpit that you hear them characterized as somehow devoid of joy or meaning or purpose. Most atheists, at least 20 million atheists in this country, at least, depending on all the different polls you consult. It could be 18 to 25, maybe. But these are people who work hard, they pay their taxes, they contribute to charity, they stand in soup lines, they do volunteer work, they vote, they sit on juries, they serve in the military. These are good for the most part, educated, well-rounded, happy, well-adjusted people. Look where you see the serious mental problems coming. Usually there's a serious connection with religion. I'm not saying this disproves the existence of God, but it is wrong to somehow assume, Steve, that Robert's the only happy person here in this debate. I, I assume that he is the only happy person. now in control of my own thinking than I was as a slave of a religious ideology. But let me, let me answer your question. You've got it all backwards. Uh, you're assuming that it's a 50-50 proposition, that what if I'm wrong? You know, if I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm going to go to hell, and, if, if I'm, uh, and that Robert's losing nothing if he's wrong. First of all, Robert and other Christians are investing a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money. They're investing, uh, even if it's a benign untruth, there's nothing to be gained by believing in untruth. But more than that, uh, we could make the same argument to Robert or you, Steve. What if you're wrong? What if, what if you and I both died right now and we ended up in the Islamic hell? We'd both be down there scratching our own heads, you know? Or what if God does exist, but he's only going to reward those people who have enough courage not to believe in him? There's another possibility. And we could keep heaping on these uh, possibilities of what if you're right and what if we're wrong. And the Christian possibility safely comes down almost to zero when it becomes one of an infinite number of other possibilities. It is only a Christian who would think that this is a 50-50 bet, such as Blaise Pascal did back at, with his wager. Robert? Uh, well, again, see, Dan is a slave of the religion of humanism, rationalism, materialism. He has this set of beliefs. Uh, he has yet to defend them. And that's what led me away from atheism and skepticism, uh, was to see that logic and science and philosophy point to faith in God as being reasonable and enlightened and liberating. Matter of fact, it's Jesus Christ who has set me free uh, from slavery, simply to humanism and to speculation and to relativism. 540-0580, that's our talk line number, 1-800-724-5801, the toll-free number. Robert Morey, Dan Barker, we're talking about God, or the lack of one, depending on which gentleman's point of view you want to uh, pick at here. When we come back, Dan, you said before that there are many working ministers in America who are atheists, and you know that, I, I think, as a matter of fact in, in terms of your opinion. I want an explanation of that when we come back. It is my talk line number. I want everybody to know that uh, Robert Morey is going to be leaving us uh, in another 10 minutes at the 12 noon, mainly because of the uh, uh, mechanical difficulties we're having with uh, his phone and our equipment at this end, unfortunately. But Robert Morey in the days to come will be back because he's an author of 24, 25 books, uh, aren't you, Bob? And, and I want you to have an opportunity to, and I want the opportunity to interview you about uh, uh, some of your writings. Uh, Dan Barker, the former Reverend Dan, Dan Barker will stay with me until 1 o'clock this afternoon, and we'll take a lot of calls 
Bill's next hour if uh, you want to question him about his uh, point of view. Working ministers, there are many of them today who are atheists. Is that your claim, Dan? Well, I base that claim on the fact that there's, uh, I know of at least 15 ministers who are in our organization of various denominations, uh, Seventh-day Adventist, uh, Baptist, uh, Roman Catholic, Irish Roman Catholic priest, and so on, who said that when, for a period of time during their ministry, they were unbelievers, they were atheists, but they were still preaching. In fact, that's true of me. For six months, I went through a time of terrible hypocrisy. In the summer of 1983, I knew that I did not believe in a God anymore, but it took me six months to break it off. It, it wasn't something I could do overnight. So I was actually preaching, and there were actually people getting saved, if you can believe this, listening to the ministry of a man who didn't believe in God anymore. So, uh, uh, I, in fact, there are many liberal Christians uh, in liberal churches who have so defined God uh, out of existence that they are practical atheists. And, of course, there are the Unitarians or the atheistic Jews. Uh, there are many uh, avowed atheists who are filling the pulpit and ministering to people's needs in the real world. Any response to that, Robert? Um, it's interesting that, again, he does not give you any documentation. According to the religious polls from Gallup and others, you only have 2% of the country uh, that would classify itself as not believing in God. And the same thing when it comes to the clergy. I give you encyclopedias. I give you dictionaries, I give you textbooks, Dan gives you the testimony of 15 people, which is hearsay. But the point is this, Dan married the daughter of the woman who founded the Freedom From Religion Foundation, so he married into a business that, like a parasite, is in existence only because religious people like me are hanging around. So he's still making his money off religion, but in a negative way. That's an interesting comment. Dan? Well, I'm, uh, I'm disappointed. I expected more out of Robert than an ad hominem argument. If you take any classes in logic, you can see, I, for example, suppose I admitted that I'm some terrible drunkard, wife beat, or whatever. Uh, how would that add any evidence to the existence of a God? The same thing happened with well, Robert Ingersoll 100 years ago. They went after him, his out. character, and whatever. Uh, uh, yes, I do admit that I, I'm making a very modest salary off of working for the Freedom from Religion Foundation, but there's a demand for it. There's at least 20 million atheists in this country, and if you consult the polls, Harris or Gallup or whatever, it's always between 5 and 9 percent who will say they do not believe in a God, always in that area. So, I mean, what's the problem? If it's wrong for me to make a living doing what I enjoy in helping people to come out of uh, a dependency on religion, then it's also wrong for every other preacher in this country. Uh, to be getting paid the salaries they get for preaching the gospel. No, um, the difference is this, Dan. You have said, and I have the tape, that no group has the right to impose its views on the rest of the country, and that's what you're doing. You're no, Robert. Radio. No, Robert, that's not what we're doing. You are wrong about that. Other people. We are not imposing our group on the, our, our morality in the country. We're doing the opposite of that. We are hoping that the state will get out of the business of religion and non-religion. We we, I would be just as upset if a school teacher got up and led the class in an atheistic slogan. I would resist that. I do not think atheism should be pushed in the schools or in the government. The state and the church should be separate. Robert, you are mischaracterizing uh, us atheists as somehow evil people who want to run into churches and try to knock people over the head. We we are not doing that. Our, exist, our organization exists to put, help protect the First Amendment of this Constitution so that we all have freedoms in this country, well, and we exist because don't. there are millions of sort of disenfranchised unbelievers around the country who are happy to learn that they can go to a place for some fellowship with other like-minded unbelievers. Well, well, Dan, I did not say you're evil or they're evil atheists running around trying to uh, destroy churches, so don't put words in my mouth. We're talking simply on this basis. You were at one time an evangelist for Christianity. You are now an evangelist for atheism. You're still making your money out of your ministry. Marie, you're on WHP. Uh, Marie? Yeah. Okay, I have a, a, a question. Uh, I've been listening since the beginning. Um, I'm sorry Robert's going to be gone because uh, this man, Dan... I think I'm gonna, I've changed my mind. His line seems to be clearing up for some reason. Okay, because I, me, I just so. want to say... Well, wait, wait, wait a second, Marie. Robert, you, I'm, we're going to disconnect at noon. I will call you back for next hour. Okay. All right. You're, 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 the line seems to be getting a little better, but we'll see what happens. Go ahead, Marie. Well, I just want to say two things, and then I do want to ask a question. Um, 
Uh, from the beginning, I just want to make two statements. He said, I'm a Christian. He said that the um, Christianity is based on faith. And I disagree with that. I believe Christianity is based on the person of Jesus. And I believe faith is the tool which enables me to know him. So it's possible that this gentleman never really got beyond the faith part, never really got to know Christ. I'm not going to debate with him whether or not Jesus resurrected because I know personally that he did, but of course I can't prove that, so that's my personal belief. And about the fact that he was um, preaching for six months and that people were getting sh uh, saved, as he says, um, the Bible says that the gospel is the power of God. I mean, anyone can get up, and if they're preaching the gospel according to Scripture, in Romans it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And so, um, I, I disagree. I, I think perhaps he was in with, as he has said, there are some fringe atheists. Perhaps he was in with a group of Christians who had never actually... Uh, come to the All right, Marie you, made, Marie, you made an interesting observation. Dan, she said at the beginning, I believe, that faith is the tool uh, Jesus uses for us to know him. Respond to that. Well, in one sense, she's absolutely right, because without faith, it is impossible to know any of this stuff. For example, the resurrection of Jesus is a historical question. And Marie says, without even a flicker of embarrassment, that she knows personally that this historical event happened 2,000 years ago. Well, I mean, she I believes would, it does. I mean, I would never say words like that. Wait a second now. She... She said she. I wrote okay, down. Okay, I know. Okay. I know. I heard her. I, I heard her say that too. I knew. I knew instinctively you were going to pick up on that. Well, he cannot prove. You see that I have not had an encounter with the person Jesus Christ. He can say that he doesn't believe it. Then let me ask you. But this. I know what I have experienced, and I know for a fact. I know that Jesus Christ did raise from the dead and does care about people, and I'm not going to say that he, you know, I'm not going to try to prove it to him. I, what, it would be like... All right, what, 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 what she's saying, Dan, let me use the old tree in the forest analogy here. What she say, her faith, Marie's faith, the tool Jesus uses uh, to, to connect with, with us mere mortals down here on earth, Dan, uh, can be translated this way, perhaps. She is saying, in a sense, that she knows unequivocally that when a far when a tree falls in the middle of a forest okay and nobody's around she knows it makes a noise when it falls she might not be able to prove that every tree that crashes when no one's there uh, makes a noise but she knows in her heart that it does make a noise and she knows in her heart because of the faith that she has that jesus christ did rise from the dead does sit with his father in heaven and does does control our lives spiritually when we want him and when we let him. And I will not debate so, that with him because so I know you're saying, I know, I, uh, 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 you won't debate it, Marie, because you can't prove that the tree in the forest makes a noise when it falls right. when you're not there to hear it. Now, right. Dan, respond to that. Well, I used to preach that very sermon myself, Marie. I know exactly what you think. No, I, I'm not preaching a sermon. Well, Marie, let me finish here. I I'm know talking about an, it would be as ridiculous Marie, for Marie, me I to know say exactly what you're saying. that you don't exist. Yourself. I know exactly what you're saying. I used to also say the same thing. That well, then I you were lying. Parts, that Jesus was real, that he had saved me, that his blood washed away my sins. Yes, I was but a then you were evangelical, lying. born again Christian. Now, you listen here a second. There are Muslims who say that they know in their heart of hearts that Allah is a real God. There are Hindus who will tell you that they know subjectively, as a matter of fact, that their God is a true God. There are other religious people who will look you in the face and tell you that there's no way you can disagree with their personal subjective experience. What you are having, Marie, and what I had is a very real but a very psychological human experience that points to nothing outside well, of the first mind. Of all, it is wishful thinking. It is not true. The fact, first of all, let me just say something to you. The fact that a Muslim says that they know Muhammad is real is not the point. You are not attacking Muhammad. You are attacking Christians, and you are, you are specifically talking about Christians. So I am telling you that I myself know for a fact that Jesus Christ is real and exists, uh, and beyond, I will not get into how I know or what has happened to me, because that's personal. 
But I am, I, the fact that other people say that they know Muhammad is real does not take away from the fact that I know that Jesus is alive and well. So but, that, that's not the argument. But don't you see how it does nothing to convince me? It puts you in the same boat with all these other crazy no, people. No, I'm not trying to convince you. I'm you won't with that kind of talk. No, no, I'm not trying to convince uh, you at all. I'm trying to say... Jump ball because I have news. Marie, thank you for your call. Okay. Robert, are you still there? I'm here. All right. Now, all right. Now, let's disconnect, and I'll call you both back in about five minutes. Okay, guys? Okay. All That's right. good. All right. We uh, are still taking calls, too. Robert Morey and Dan Barker will be back. There is nothing at all in the first century, I nothing during the life of Jesus or the within those two generations okay, after. Stop. Yes, in the second century, yes, there are some no. people who were then, the, the church came into existence in the second century. Then you start finding no, Tacitus no, and Suetonius, no. but even these don't mention Jesus. They all mention right, Christ. All right, wait a minute. And they're Robert. too late. They are too late to be considered reliable first-hand historical Robert, testimony. Robert wants to go back to the first century. Robert? Um, yes, as a matter of fact, um, Sheila Thompson who was also with the Freedom From Religion campaign. I had a debate with her, and she finally admitted on the air that uh, in Cave 7 of the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, several portions of the New Testament were found which must be dated at least A.D. 57, and this was reported in the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times, journals, etc. She finally said, oh, that's right. We have first century literary documentation within 20 years of the death of Jesus Christ. You so, accept that, Dan? No, as a matter of fact, most people date the Dead Sea Scrolls before the first century. So now, now, Robert just told you that some of the scrolls have been dated to the first century, uh, reported in the New York Times, and even a member of your own uh, organization uh, uh, acquiesced to that point. Now, you're saying that you still don't accept that. No, I don't accept all right, that. that I have, all right. Okay, that's, it's an impasse. I, I'm going to take some calls here. Because... To accept that, Dan, in this particular presentation today would, would put you in a position of having to believe that as much as you believe that Washington crossed the Delaware. See? Bob, I just explained why I, that w I would not have to believe it as Washington crossed the Delaware. I, there one there of the were reasons, four valid reasons yeah, why. Yeah, one of the reasons was that the way I understood it, Dan, was that, uh, that, that according to you, there's no evidence that Christ was crucified or rose from the dead emanating from the first century. Well, we, Robert just explained to you that even a member of your own organization admitted that there is proof. I doubt that she did that. I, I, I don't think... Right here before me. Well, um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's, Robert right, is so okay. faint that it sounds like... All right, all right, let me, let, let, let me take some calls here. And you're on WHP with Robert Morey and Dan Barker. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Hope the others can. Okay. Speak up. I have, I have two brief comments. One, Dan, the atheist said, you cannot prove there is no God. Therefore, it's a faith belief. He is a very religious man. Secondly, and this is most important, Dan said, and I quote, because I wrote this down, I don't want to impose morality on others. Now, based on this, logically, it is therefore okay to rape, murder, molest children, because with no objective moral standard, such as is existing Christianity, the atheist cannot judge. Therefore, atheism is devoid of morals. Now, in light of this, I want Dr. Morey to quote, to, to comment on this, because... No, I want Dan to said, comment. Whoa. I want said, Dan. Wait a minute. Can I what? finish? No. And hold on a second. You're getting too complicated. Let Dan respond to what you've said so far. Dan? Uh, first of all, I'll repeat it again and again so I'm blue in the face. You'll get a chance to complete your remarks, Dan. I just wanted you to pause there and give Dan an opportunity to respond to what you said so far. Go ahead, Dan. Atheism is not a faith. Do I have to say it a hundred times? You can say it, but for example, you I do not believe it. in Santa Claus. That makes me in. There's no proof. Exactly. So now listen, Dan. Uh, you can quick say characterize it like you have to characterize it. Listen. listen. Jump ball, please. And hold on. You'll get a chance to say it all. You'll get a chance to disagree, but you can't talk at the same time. Dan, finish your remarks. Okay, okay. Bob. It, since it's so faint, I can't hear anyone talking when I'm I know talking. you can't. It's nobody's fault. Just wait. Okay. Yeah, go. Uh, atheism is. Is, is a lack of faith. It is not a faith. And I wish Christians would quit hopping on this. It's like it's like they think there's something wrong with faith, and therefore we atheists are also Which uh, is a suspect faith. or vulnerable. Well, if we're suspect and vulnerable because you think we have a faith, 
point the finger around back to yourself, you are equally suspect. Atheism is the absence of faith. A leprechaunism is the absence of a belief in leprechauns. A Santa Clausism is the absence of a belief Which in Santa Clausism. Doesn't mean I can prove or disprove it's or deny faith. these things. Please listen to what the atheists say. Don't listen to your pastor who quotes Psalm 14 1 who calls us fools all the time. Excuse listen me. to read the atheists themselves and listen all to right, what they okay. say. Atheism and is simply yeah, the wait, absence wait. of a belief in the existence of a deity. Okay, we're not I'm defending, we're not ben asserting said. that there's no it's God. I would be happy to change my mind and accept the existence of a God. I'm not fighting it. If a God exists, it would be stupid to ignore it. But there is no evidence for the existence of a God, therefore it is illogical. Yeah, but something tells, me, something tells me, Dan, you won't accept God or Jesus Christ yeah. in your life unless one of them comes strolling into your bedroom at night or something. Well, right? that would be very one, one very strong evidence yeah, if you okay. could pull that off. And finish your remarks. What was your okay, but this is not the main point I wanted to make. Anything that you cannot prove is based on faith. We all have faith assumptions. Everything is based on presuppositions. Dan is a man of faith. Whether he likes it or not, he can use whatever semantics he wants. But that's not my main point. A brief comment here. The main point is, uh, and I don't know if you heard me before, but you speak up, I, I don't speak, want to speak up, may I may I say finish this? Up, speak up. He said I don't want to impose morality on others. Based on this logically, it would be all right to murder, rape, and molest children. If you have no objective moral standards such as is exists in Christianity, Dan. the atheist cannot judge. Therefore, atheism is devoid of morals. Now, he said at the beginning that he has a higher basis for morality than Christians, and I want to hear Bob Morey comment on this, because you haven't given him a chance to comment on much. I want to hear his oh, comment on that last statement. That old argument. If you're going to sit out there with a stopwatch, which I am not going to do in here, then then don't Never give your problems stopwatch. to me. Let's hear his comment. All right. Dan this is a dialogue. It is not a, some kind of campus debate where they get 90 seconds and no more, no less no, to make their point. No, but Dan thinks it's all right to rape my children. He has no basis to judge anybody, and I want to hear some comments. Well, you'll hear comments from Robert, but when you make accusations against a person, that person is going to get a chance to respond to them. Did you hear what she just said, Dan? Yeah, I hear that. that you're claiming the right to rape her children. Oh, he, no, he has no moral. On what basis can he judge somebody who rapes? Answer that. Okay, first of all, I, what I said was I, atheism should not be imposing its lack of belief on the rest of the world. It's, it's humanistic morality. In the public school room, in the, uh, in the state capitals, we should all be free to have our religious beliefs or unbeliefs. That does not mean that atheists are devoid of morality. Atheists that I know, in fact, are much more moral as human beings than most Christians I know. Because most atheists, and not all of them, but most atheists embrace some form of humanism or ethical culture or uh, some other uh, uh, naturalistic morality, which is infinitely preferable to a slave morality that uh, just swears blind obedience to a dictator. Uh, look what has happened into history when people have sworn blind obedience to a bloodthirsty deity. And the God of the Bible is certainly a bloodthirsty, intolerant, and jealous petty, megalomaniacal deity. He kills people who disagree with him. He calls them fools. He uh, rips open pregnant women with swords. He spreads cow dung on people's faces. Yeah, he calls uh, all, all right, right, Dan, just, okay, all right, my question. All right, last chance. He what, what, subject. what is your question? On what basis, on what basis can he say that somebody cannot rape and murder? If there is no objective standard, he may not judge the rapist. And I am very liar, and you and, the subject. And I'm very surprised that you would even think I'm that way. You. What you, you were doing is you're using an ad hominem. Let me explain very briefly here. Humanistic morality makes human beings and, and other life on this planet the basis for morality. Killing and raping hey, and stealing is wrong. It is morally wrong relative to human life. Relative. Not because of some That's absolute like cosmic code. And if yeah. you don't get that, then you haven't the faintest idea of what morality is all about. No, you are you bankrupt don't. morally if you don't Ted understand Bundy's that principle. Human. Okay, and... <laughs> Ted Bundy's a human being. And I think on that humanist standard, is that is that the standard on morality? Am I talking to myself here? I think I'm talking to myself. I feel like I'm talking to... Anne, all right, thank you for your call. Okay. All right, I appreciate your feeling so strongly about this and calling us to air your points of view. I have a commercial break coming up. We'll be right back. Robert, are you still there? Yes, I am. All right, we'll be right back. And you you can respond, if you want to, to what you've just heard before we take our next call. Uh, Robert, did you have anything you wanted to respond to with what you heard Ann and Dan say? Um, yes, I, I think it's abundantly clear 
as you read the basic textbooks on atheism produced by atheists, they do not believe in absolute morals that are eternal and transcendent over all cultures. They believe in ethical relativism. Everything's relative. There are no absolutes. When you back them into a corner, how they can condemn Hitler uh, or, or homosexuality, bestiality, child molesting, etc., then they borrow from the Christian system statements like, uh, you shall not lie, you shall not kill. They cannot have a relative basis for absolute laws. It is philosophically impossible. You hear that, Dan? I heard about six words that jumped out. I heard the word relativism. And All right, well, I, okay. I'm I, think I, got, I think I got it. All right. Uh, the mistake that Robert is making here is he is equating atheism with humanism. It does not follow that if you're an atheist, you are necessarily a humanist. It doesn't follow that if you're an atheist, you're necessarily a nice person. No atheist makes the claim that atheism will improve your life or make you happier or make you more moral. Humanism is a separate thing. In fact, there are many Christians who would call themselves humanists. And, uh, in fact, uh, Christians did not borrow, uh, atheists did not borrow or humanists from Christianity. Christianity borrowed from earlier cultures. It didn't take some tablets of stone to tell us that it was wrong to kill, as if it never would have dawned on us or that there's something wrong with stealing, as if we needed some big daddy in the sky to come down and tell us that. This is a sort of a childish way of thinking about morality. Humanistic morality is, is admittedly relativistic, and that is its strength. Even Christian morality is relativistic. Um, there are places where God broke his own commandments. He lied. Uh, he encouraged stealing. There was, uh, he, he said, I shall not kill, but then he killed a lot of people. So even Christians have a morality that is relativistic, and few Christians can even agree with each other on basic moral issues, such as abortion or the death penalty okay. or okay. birth control or right. gay Stop rights. So it, 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 it's Whoa. nice for Robert Whoa. to pretend like there's some co cosmic Christian moral code, but in real life it does not exist, and it still boils down to humanistic principles of that which that which hurts human beings and threatens it is what we would call, by definition, evil, and that which helps it, we would call it. Okay. Did you hear me trying to interrupt you all that time, Dan? Oh, not at all. I'm sorry. It's, you're so faint. I'm sorry. Okay, I give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm here. Okay. All right. All right. Let me break for some quick. Before time, 1232. We'll look at sports now. Get past the feather so we can laugh. Uh, give me a physical break. Five four zero zero five eighty. WHP. Rose. Yes, good morning. Thank you for being so patient, and it's not morning anymore. Oh, afternoon. I know you've been holding that long, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Well, hi, Dan. First of all, I want to say that I do care about you, and I really hope that you would revise your thinking and delve further within yourself and maybe call upon the Divine Presence to maybe uh, help you through this, because your way of thinking you have a lot more to lose. I mean, say, for instance, at the time of death, that they're really... There really is a God, which I do believe in, and he says to you, go, from me, go away from me into that eternal damnation called hell, for I never knew you. Now, that would be terrible, Dan, because I care about what happens to you. I myself have experienced the divine presence. It was not psychological at all, but you might think that. It was very, very real. So once you experience it, you'll never, you could never forget it. Can you hear her, Dan? Yeah, she's real strong. Okay. Yeah. I would like you to explain... What you just said, Rose, what the uh, experience that you had. You want, you want me to explain my experience? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, anyway, um, my dad had been very ill. I loved my father very much, and, and uh, the, you know, the thoughts of his death really uh, was bothering me, you know. And um, I remember that I thought, well, I'm going to really break down when I go up there and I'm going to see him, you know, dead. And, I, and we were going up, uh, driving up in the car, and I was praying, and I said, you know, to Jesus, I said, you know, if you're up there, your presence, I said, I would really like to feel the presence. Because um, I said, I want to picture my father alive in heaven, not laid out as I see him in a casket and just see him there. And uh, I'd like you to come to me and give me this peace. And at that moment, I, I'll have to say that I felt, I could feel surrounded by a very loving, warm presence. I felt very warm and extremely at peace at that time. And I knew that, that the presence, the divine presence was with me. And so when I went up and I saw my father, 
I did not break down, did not cry at that time. I, I looked at him, and I just thought, it's only your shell being there. And the thought came to my mind that my father was with Jesus and divinely happy. And as I said, it wasn't psychologically induced because I asked for the presence to come to me at that time. And it was just, it was absolutely beautiful. I did have another experience, which I won't go into. Well, but... stop right there. Now, Dan, uh, Dan? Yeah, I'm here. What's wrong with that? I'm not telling Rose what she can or cannot believe. I'm just telling Rose that I don't believe that. Uh, I used to have the same experience as myself, Rose. Okay, I... but all right, but hold on just a second, Dan. You right. can't, you, you, are you saying that what she experienced was false? No. What she experienced was very real, but it was only psychological. Oh, no, no, Dan. Oh, yes, yes, Rose. Oh, no. <laughs> Dan, please. You know, I want to, did you ever read anything about the apparitions at Meta Johari, at Fatima, and at Lourdes? Have you looked into any of these things at all? Yes, I have, and they're a complete joke. Oh, I, Dan, I, you know, so I want ready. you to go to heaven, Dan. Don't you understand? Well, Rose, maybe you do, but I don't. Oh, Dan, but you have you have everything to lose no, by Rose, your thinking. You've got it backwards. Don't oh, Dan. Yes. If your God exists, and he's the God of the Bible... Ask him to come to you, Dan. Ask him to show you. You're, calling, you're not calling upon him. Well, this is silly. I've done, I did that for years and years. What were you going to say, Dan? If God if, exists... If the God of the Bible exists, and I would be forced to accept it, and I would accept it rationally, I still might choose not to spend eternity with that bloodthirsty tyrant. I, he could still not demand my respect. Well, you want to go with the bloodthirsty tyrant Satan? Do you want to go with him? Oh, Dan. Oh, really? I mean, you're really serious about this, aren't you, Rose? Yeah, Dan, I now, wait a second. about you. Oh, hold on just a second, Rose. Okay. Dan, answer her question, Dan. If, well, there, uh, is if... Devil, and there is no God, but oh. if there is a God, and he's the God of the Bible, yeah. then I would feel rationally justified. I would feel obligated not to worship it, not to respect that bully. He's a tyrant. So you wouldn't want to go to heaven? I would not want to spend eternity. It would be a hell to have to live in Rose's So, heaven. So where would you go, Dan? Well, if, if I'm going to be sent to hell, then I would go willingly, and I would, oh. I would rub it in God's nose for sending me there. I would say, if you want to be a bully, then you be a bully. But Dan, you know, Hold on a second, oh. Rose. Are you saying then, Dan, assuming in your own heart, that, assuming that Christians are correct about evil and goodness and heaven and hell and God and Satan, uh, that if all of that was true and you discovered that to be true, that when you died, you would rather spend eternity with... Satan than with God. Well, is that, that's what you not spend eternity with an evil God, and that God that Rose believes in is an evil deity. Satan, is, Satan is the evil God, Dan. Get Christianity well, right. You're the reverend. I would Where would you rather go? I certainly would not worship and respect an evil deity like portrayed in the picture of the Bible. So where would you go, Dan? You'd have to go. My business. You'd have. I, I would. I would not want to go up in heaven and be a hypocrite, pretending to worship. But the only other way to go is to hell. So, you, so you, what I'm trying to get you to admit is, is that if all of this was true, that you'd rather spell, uh, spend eternity uh, being with the damned and with Satan, right? Well, Mark Twain said. Tell me what you say. I don't care what he said. What do you, are you telling me that you'd rather spend eternity with Satan than when, with them with God? <laughs> Yes or no? Uh, I, I, why do you find it? Why now. do you find it difficult to answer? You have already spent an hour denying God's existence. Why are you afraid to admit that you don't want to be with Satan? Is because it the, to admit that would be admitting the possibility that Satan exists? Well, you Absolutely. just told you just told me that you don't want to be with God. That's tantamount to admitting the same thing that God exists. Well, this is a hypothetical question that you created at the outset. You're only answering half of it. If well, you're, hypothetically speaking, you said you wouldn't want to go to heaven if indeed there ever was one which means you'd rather be with Satan in hell. No, it doesn't mean that. Well, no, it means but, that I would view Satan and God as equally evil. And if I had if I had to choose, I may as well choose one evil over another. And oh. I would not choose a God who pretends to be good when he's really evil. Well, I have, so, in doing, so in rejecting God, you'd, you'd be accepting Satan. That's what you, in that, rejecting God, I'd be accepting goodness and morality. Oh, Dan, I feel sorry for you. You're going to be converted. I'll never stop praying for you, Dan. You know, Dan, Dan, okay, thank you, Rose. You know, Dan, I find that you're playing semantics with me here. You, you think you've got me chasing my tail, Dan, but I have found a chink in your armor, my friend, possibly, that you're not even 
been aware of. And that is, is that y your failure, your refusal to answer these questions I'm asking you about being with God instead of, or rather being with Satan instead of being, well, you're not answering my question. You're, you're avoiding the, 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 the real question here. And I can only assume the reason you're avoiding it is because somewhere in the recesses of your spirit and soul, somewhere there's a remnant of Jesus Christ. Tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong. Then answer the question, Dan. Are you? Would you rather be with Satan than with God? Yes, because Satan and God are equally evil in my book. I would rather be with Satan, even though he doesn't exist. Satan is much nicer than the God of the Bible. Yes. We'll be right back. Attention, everyone on the East Shore. A bit more, based on what you just heard prior to the break, any comment? Or do you want me to go right to the phones here? No, I have a comment. I'm, I'm fascinated because as I'm listening... I'm listening to someone who out of one side of his mouth would say everything is relative, there are no absolutes, there's no such thing as absolute evil, and then out of the other, other side of his mouth, God is evil, Jesus is evil, Christians are crazy. You cannot do that. That is not only illogically, it is hypocrisy. If you have no ultimate standards, you cannot judge God and impose your immorality on him. You cannot judge these other people who are calling in. You have to say, oh, if it feels good and it makes you happy and it's all relative, fine. But as you see, Dan is an evangelist for unbelief. He gets his livelihood like a parasite off of religious issues. W.H.P. Hi, Bob. How you doing? Yeah, great. Uh, Robert, you're wrong there. Um, I think uh, you really stacked the deck against uh, Dan, Bob, by saying, would you rather go to heaven or hell? Well, if you don't believe in... Wait a minute, Steve. Let, 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 wait, wait a minute, Steve. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And I'm not subtracting from your time here now. I didn't raise that hypothetical situation. Dan did. Dan is the one that said this. Dan, you can deny this if you disagree, but Dan is the one who said, if there, in response to Rose, if there was a heaven, if there, there isn't, but if there was, he said, he'd not want to sit in heaven after death. Well, He's the one that raised the issue. The reason that he, for so that don't is... don't tell me I'm putting words in his mouth. I'm not if, putting words. If you don't believe in God, then when you die, you don't go anywhere. I mean, what's as simple as that? And I find it hard to believe that Anne thinks that if you don't believe in God, you have no right to say what's right or wrong. I agreed with Dan. We don't need two pieces of stone that probably didn't exist to tell us what's right and what's wrong. I mean, if, if that's the case, I, I, don't, I don't see where she got that point from at all. It's and I think that the freedom from religion is the important part. I mean, uh, I'm against... Uh, putting uh, non-belief in religion to force people into that view. I agree with you on that. But by the same token, uh, I don't, I don't uh, believe in the visions. I don't believe that exists. And I also, one thing that uh, Dan was saying about how if the God was so loving, then why would he send somebody to hell in a certain sense? I think that a lot of people have ceased to believe in God because we live in a world that's based on a, a a destructive struggle for existence. I mean, everything is, uh, uh, I just don't see the relevance. So you say, well, how do you know if Washington crossed the uh, Delaware uh, compared to whether Moses uh, took the tablets to the mountains? Well, I think it's quite clear which of those is true and which isn't. I mean, Prove it. Uh, Prove it. All you're, getting, all, all, all you're getting, Steve. Oh, we've got a book, the Bible, and we say, oh, well, hey, that's got to be true because we all believe it. Well, prove to me that Washington crossed the Delaware. Prove it. Now, you're going to... The only thing... The, the, only, thing, the, 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 only, thing, the only thing you can do, Steve, is go to some book and say, see, the book says it. That's all you can do. That was the point of raising the issue. Well, Steve. I don't see that... I mean, I can understand people following the Bible and God, and I think that's good for those who like that and those who don't, but I don't think that the rest of us who don't see that as an absolute are these people with no morals and uh, that we're going to rape and plunder and how can we say that this is wrong and, uh, you well, know, if that's the case... No, Christians aren't saying that. Well, listen, me. if the case is that we're all going to go to hell 
in the end. Then on the way there, I'll bump into Rose and Ann on the way and uh, ask them what they did wrong, too, because I don't think anybody is going to be void of any wrongdoing where the God is going to forgive them all. Well, now you are beginning to feel, though, Steve, uh, Steve that, that there may be a hell. Uh, well, I don't... Uh, I, I just don't see where that uh, religion is fine, but I think that it, it has its place. Okay. And it's not the, uh, you know, people say, well, we're founded on the belief in God. Uh, some people are, some aren't. And I think that the Constitution does Are you say, angry with, 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 are you angry with Christians, Steve? No, not at all. I, I okay. only am in a sense that this uh, elitist type of attitude that, um, there's the premier people, or the, 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 they, know, they know the way. That well, Christians are no more adamant, Steve, that uh, there, there is uh, a relationship to be had with Jesus Christ as Dan Barker and his group is, uh, who say there isn't. They're, they're as adamant. So, uh, Dan, do you agree that you are as adamant uh, in your feelings as Christians are about theirs? You've been on both sides of this fence. I, I would agree Steve, that I'm, prob I'm as sincere. Huh? But I would not say adamant. I would say I am as sincere as Sincere? Dave. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Do you have any problems with Christians, Dan? Are you angry at Christians? Uh, Anne was talking about atheists wanting to rape her children. I think it was Anne. Maybe it was... No, that was Anne. She, and, said, uh, she yeah. said because you don't accept Jesus Christ, you're claiming the right to rape her children. Now, obviously, she was using that as some example that I don't understand. I don't think she literally believes that. Well, if Anne would read the current newspapers over the last few years, she would see there's much more likelihood of her children being raped by a priest or a minister than by some atheist. Robert, are you angry with uh, atheists? No, because that's just where I left and where I, I feel pity because, again, even with the collar... They keep trying to escape from the issue that it, once you are committed to the proposition that everything is relative, there are no absolutes, then the particular atheist, be it Hitler or Lenin or Stalin or whoever, however they work that out, it's never good. It's never good. How can you condemn other systems when you have no basis? You have no absolute. John, you're on WHP. Yeah, okay. Uh, my favorite word here is to try to make some distinctions. And I've written my notes here, well, all the philosophical arguments and things like that. But when I really kept listening to Dan, and I believe that's the former minister that was an atheist, correct? Yes. I think and uh, he is angry, or appears to me, he is angry with God. He is dissatisfied with God. I'm kind of, you know, using my uh, psychology here for some personal reason. And it, it is true that when you read the Old Testament, you, you, you can come to the conclusion of God the terrible. He's correct about that. And, and, I'm, and I say this all with the greatest amount of respect and charity for and toward him. Because in the life of even a believer... It's very difficult to even be a believer. Many of the ministers, they have to have tremendous amount of faith. The only thing that I can liken this to is whether a person has a positive attitude or a negative attitude. You can find as many reasons to be negative as you can to be positive in this world, just as you can find as many reasons, I believe philosophically, uh, why there is the existence or probability of God. You can't prove it. Well, that's why faith is a choice. Am I right, Dan? That's right. Right. And oh. so even if you can prove, and if you can prove it, it's not faith. So I think that the philosophical questions here, and I follow them, and I, my major is philosophy, and I've studied a lot of theology. I don't think that that's the major thing here. I think that's the side here, because I think all of us have experienced some anger with God. So what's or, the major we, thing here? See, and I think that that's it. That, there is where what? It's a certain, it's a dissatisfaction, uh, in other words... God just didn't come across as great as he, he would have. Now, whether uh, his training did that, I don't know, or some personal reason. And he is correct. And there are contradictions in Scripture. No question. Scholars say that, all right? But, uh, but I think the crook here is a personal, and, and it's individual with him. It's subjective with him that he is angry with God. And I think uh, it appears... Are you, Dan? ...didn't hit the nail on the head. Dan. I'm very close. And, that's all I, all right. and I feel for that type of person. Let's, let's let Dan respond to that. Are you angry with God, Dan? Uh, the God that's portrayed in the Bible, that God 
all of us should be angry with that God. Well, let's go back to before you began down the slope yep. to, 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 to where you are today. Let, let, let's go back to five or six years when you were a, a, a minister with your congregation, Dan. Uh, at, at some point, you began to have cracks in the foundation of your faith. Was any of that connected with an anger towards God? No, not at all. Well, that, or, or the anger toward that concept. Yeah, that is correct. He, but, you know, when you study, he you look, when you want to study Scripture, I mean, uh, I, you have to be a very intelligent person. Before you even open Scripture, you have to learn languages. You don't have, he knows all this. Archaeology, you know, and history. And all, before you even get to Scripture. So it's a very complicated. And so to take it very literally, it almost sounds like he's a fundamentalist in some way. You know, that takes uh, God. And that, that is not the message. I think the uh, point is his concept of God, you know, uh, and people have written books about that. Your concept of God is incorrect. Uh, that, that may be, but it is not what is the classic idea of what God is. God is defined as, you know, all merciful, all good, all, all right. kind. And Robert perfection. Morey, comment on what's been right. said. Thank you, John. Well, I guess it's almost closing comment, but... Um, no, we got some time yet. Go ahead. Okay. I, again, I think this is to the point. If someone, because of a psychological struggle, decides that God disappointed them, uh, Madeline Murray O'Hare admits that part of the reason, uh, according to her son, why she became an atheist is that she didn't marry the man she wanted to marry. And so that people because of some reason psychologically turn against God. An atheist will say, no, 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 because if he were to admit that, that would make him guilty as charged. So I would expect Dan to say, oh, no, no, I wasn't bitter against God, but if I talk to his mother, his grandmother, his last pastors, I wonder what they would say in terms of how they would explain what happened to Danny. Dan? Uh, Robert, I will give you my mother and father's phone number. I will give you the phone number of former pastors that I worked with. I won't do it over the air because I don't want everyone calling my mom. My mother and father, who were fundamentalist Christians, are now atheists and unbelievers because they started studying and learned like I. Did that, that happen years. before or after you? After me, about two or three years after me. Let me ask you this question. So bad. Zan, let me ask you this question. Do you ever take the Lord's name in vain like many people do when you get angry or upset? You, I, I'm not given to swearing, but once in a while I'll say, God damn, you know, once a year or so. And do you ever say Jesus Christ in anger? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, no, I don't think so. And when you do that, of course, I, I'll take whatever you say at face value, but when you, when you do that, tell me that you don't sustain some kind of twinge somewhere within you that... I don't. Bob, at all. Tell me that as you go through your normal day, Dan, and you look up up to the stars at night, or there's countless situations you may find yourself in, pleasant situations you may find yourself in, that you don't ever think about the possibility of God. No, I uh, don't. Or, or Jesus Christ be living within you. I, have, I, I don't. Quick, I cannot. I cannot believe that, Dan. Particularly with your background, you're an ordained former minister, and 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 even though you make all of the claims, and I'm not going to dispute that that you have on this program, you're telling me that you go through your daily routines uh, in, in your life, taking the Lord's name in vain, like many people do from time to time, and you never get any twinges that that you haven't you ever wondered why you take the Lord's name in vain? Bob, there are millions of atheists just like me who, who are not bothered by these questions you're raising. It's your problem. It's not ours. I'm not bothered by my questions. I'm you just asking. You are. No, I'm not. <laughs> if you were to take the Lord's name in vain, you'd throw a twinge of guilt, right? Yes. But, uh, it, okay, but I right, forget taking his name in vain because we are short on time now. I'm just wondering, you're telling me that you never go through your daily life uh, being confronted with in, in, in many different situations where it never crosses your mind or your heart that uh, that 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 God is with us. No, not at all. I mean, it's a, it's a complete myth. It's, it's not even a 
plausibility in my mind. I don't believe that for the simple reason that you could not belong to a freedom from religion foundation. You, you're, you're demanding freedom from God. Is what, uh, how, how, can you, how can you make that claim? You, but you, 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 the very organization you belong to is determined on a daily basis to deny the existence. I don't have to belong to this group. I'm out of, I'm out of time, guys. Robert Moore, we'll talk about your books. Dan, I want you back too, my friend, in the future, okay? Can I give the address of that? Uh, I can't. I'm out of time.